Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the CSGO ESL Pro League. My name is Dan Gaskin, joined on the desk this week, of course, with Jackie Peters once again. We had some absolutely incredible games yesterday, some big upsets, to be honest. Heroic coming on top over NIP was definitely unexpected. I mean, talk me through what happened a little bit. What went wrong with some of those games? Yeah, obviously, to start off, we had that fantastic matchup between Nip and Heroic. We assumed Nip would be coming in, you know, quite dominantly on a map like Train, but Heroic, they just pulled their A game. Now, the Danish scene has just been looking better and better in recently. It was some exciting controversy that actually happened today as well, so I'm sure we'll probably get into some of that later on. But yeah, it was absolutely dominant. Heroic just pulled their way in. Communication was on point. It just looked fantastic. Meanwhile, for Nip, they were just stuck in a rut in terms of playstyle as well. Economy management was terrible, and just the way they were using their utility, everything just looked really off them. It wasn't the nip we expected to see going into that, especially on train. Yeah, there were some big results yesterday. We'll see how that affected the league table in the grand scheme of things. I mean, obviously there was results on the mainstream as well. You can see at the top there, Astralis. They have played four maps, but their record is two and two. So they're not going all out just through everything just yet. Kinguin and Heroic with some great results we saw yesterday on our secondary stream. They're two and oh, and then Mouse Esports just below there. Mouse Sports there with Navi at one and one. And down at the low end of the table, we see NOP after those two losses. And that's not exactly how we expected the table to be looking early on. But there's still plenty of time for these teams to get back into it. We'll have a look at what fixtures we've got today, though, Jackie, because we do have some juicy ones here. You can see over on the mainstream, it's going to be Navi versus Virtus Pro and then North versus Fnatic. But over here, we have NIP versus Mouse and FaZe versus Heroic. So big matches, as I said. NIP are going to look to to make up for yesterday after that loss. And I mean, let, let's just focus a little bit more on, on NIP versus Mouse here, because NIP are on a five loss competitive streak. Like they, they are just without a win mm. at the moment, which is unheard of. I think there's a lot of NIP fans who are quite outraged really that they're not performing as well as they should be. And then we've got, they're coming up against Mouse who had decent results yesterday. They, they went one and one against Astralis. They managed to get three points on the board against, well, major winners, so pretty good for them. How do you see this playing out? Yeah, I think this is really going to be an interesting matchup, to say the least, going into this. Obviously, there's been a little bit of a tweak in the mouse lineup with Oscar returning to the active squadron, and we have seen the departure of Chris J. Um, something that was talked about very heavily, you know, was this the correct decision to make? Was this the right move? As obviously, Chris J was someone that was still performing quite well. There was a lot of discussion whether it should have been Spiddy instead. So this is something that we need to see them prove to us going into this matchup today. Hopefully, Oscar can bring a lot to the table. But Nip, they need to step it up. The form they just played yesterday, has been really sort of, you know, a key of their 27 form. It's not been what we want to see. Nip have just looked sort of sucking her up throughout the period of this year so far. They need to step it up. They need to bounce back and return with a little bit of that Nip magic we're so used to seeing. And the only way they can do that is if they start, start to tighten things up. Because across the board, it just looks sloppy. Communication was down. And the biggest thing we saw was just in terms of sight takes, using that utility was just really off. It was odd. It was just not Nip we expected to see. And Dust2 is going to be the first map of the day. Uh, it's going to be a, a very interesting one. I mean, if we look at last time that these guys played up, there was no Dust2 between. Oh, yes, actually, there was. There was a 16 to 7 victory for Mouse the last time these guys faced. That's back in November, yeah. though, so that is a slightly different lineup. Uh, I mean, what, thoughts on Dust2 in general? Obviously, it is rotating out late, later on uh, in week two. Do you have to lean towards either of these teams for that matchup? Yeah, it's interesting what you're saying, because obviously, just for the fact alone, like the plot point that it will be gone in the rest of Pro League Season 5 from next week onward. So this is kind of our, our last chance to see people shine on it and see what they can bring to the table. Now, Mal's for me, will definitely perform quite well on Dust2. And Oscar was always someone that was very flamboyant on the map. He knows how to play it to the best of his ability. You know, he is one of those very aggressive players. He's a mad fragger when he pops off on his of his own, right? He knows how to wield the orb efficiently. And if we see him really coming into his own, Oscar can cause some damage. I want to see how much of a leash they're going to allow to do so because you do have those impact players Nico as well you know it's the Nico show nine times out of ten he's the reason Mouse Sports is so famous he's the one that always brings to the A game and we just need to see the rest of Mouse Sports stepping up Spiddy hasn't had the best sort of time recently Dennis as well I feel like has been lackluster and hopefully they can just step it up come back into their own form into this matchup on Dust2 but Nip as well it's going to be the same story for them we need to see a lot more Get Right was playing out of his mind yesterday in quite a few critical rounds but he seemed to be the only one really to form Forrest did you know, very well in a couple of pistol rounds, working his way through. But it seemed like Forrest was hit and miss throughout both of yesterday's games. He had some impact frags, but that was it. He then went quiet in quite a few important rounds as well. So it, it was odd. The Nip squad just seemed down. 
Yeah, they did a little bit. I mean, it wasn't like the NIP of old, the nip that we were expecting to see. Uh, map 2 is going to be Train, and we look at yesterday's results. Obviously, NIP did lose 16-11 to 11 on Train against Heroic, which... I mean, kind of blew us out of the water, really, and I don't really know what went wrong for Nip. They kind of were very late with their executes, they were wasting a lot of time, but they weren't doing anything with that time. I think you, you said earlier they weren't really drawing out the utility of their opposition of Heroic. When we do move into train, what, what has to change for Nip if they are going to get any sort of result against Mouse here? Well, yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, that was one of the major things that really caused that to happen in the first place, due to the fact when Nip were playing like that on train yesterday, you know, they started off well, they were able to pick up the pistol round quite dominantly, and then from that point onwards, things just started to leak away. They got those first three rounds, it just all went downhill from what I remember, and it was just the fact that utility management was completely off, and their playbook just seemed bare. And this is what we're used to, you know, Nip have threat behind them, they have a lot of strategy involved in their team, it's sort of imbued with that, that Nip play style. They do work their way through, they used to have a very vast playbook, and on a map like Train, I expected them to bring some of that to the table, but it looked static, it was not organic at all, and all Heroic were doing is just slightly bending, slightly adapting their playstyle when they didn't break once. Nip just kept hitting the same brick wall over and over again repeatedly and didn't really switch up their playstyle enough. And this is the thing, going into today, they need to be a little bit more organic. They have to switch up that style of CS. You can't just accept the same thing to happen you know, over and over again and just sometimes work if it's being shut down. And that was all it was. You know, it, Nip just seemed like they got to this point where they were just like, all right, it's not working and mm -hmm. just accepted it. They just really set themselves up for defeat. And it's interesting because the last time these guys matched up as well, uh, they did actually beat Mouse on train, 16-9. Uh, to 9. Yes, okay, that is a couple of months ago now, and yes, okay, there were a few different players on, on rosters, but that might be a little bit of a confidence booster for them. They may be able to go in and think, right, okay, yeah, let's just put tomorrow away, let's put it to bed, put it in the cupboard, close that, hang it up, we'll take it out next year maybe, depending, but now they just need to focus on this game today. And if you had to give me a prediction, uh, let's well let's let's talk map one first. Mm -hmm. If you had to predict dust two then between NIP and Mouse, what kind of scoreline do you think is gonna go here? Or if you're not confident with the scoreline, I mean who's gonna win this map? Honestly, just going in terms of like what we saw from Nip yesterday and what I'm hopeful to see coming out from Mao's going into this, I think Mao should be able to take it. I think it's going to be a close affair on Dust 2, but this is more so a map where they're going to be sort of slightly peeking ahead. And I think this could be, you know, in the region of sort of a 16-11 scoreline if, if Nip are still playing to that style they were playing yesterday, because it, it did just look sloppy. It wasn't, it wasn't Nip. And against Astralis, I mean, Mouse had a good performance. They won 16-8 on Mirage. They mm. did then go and lose 16-11 uh, to 11 on Nuke. So they're more than capable, but we did have a, a Twitter poll. I think we've got a Twitter poll going on. Uh, get involved with that. You can tweet at ESL CSGO and just let us know who you think is going to win. We're always interested to see what, how the community is thinking here. Or go on to facebook.com forward slash ESL go. Uh, ESL CSGO to get involved as well. Let us know your thoughts. But... Whilst we are waiting, let's uh, rewind a little bit and let's have a look back at some of the best moments from the Season 4 Finals. To the mega city of Sao Paulo. As both SK and Immortals qualified for the tournament, it was a question of honour for the home teams to impress the crowd and, if possible, win the title. However, after a weak group stage, Immortals got kicked out of the competition quickly. The crowd was fired up for a Brazilian team winning the title on Brazilian soil. I think it's natural to really want to win and there is a little bit of more pressure, but we try to handle it the best we can. But in the grand final, another American team showed up. After losing to SK in the group stage, Cloud9 battled their way through the playoffs, defeating Optic and Mouse Sports for their chance to take revenge on the Brazilian superstars. The first map became a close affair and Cloud9 pushed SK to overtime, but in the end, Fallen Squad was victorious. However, the pressure Cloud9 put on SK seemed to be too much. On the next two maps, the Brazilians got overrun and Cloud9 won their first ever Pro League title. That was what happened in the Season 4 Finals. I think I would be asking you, Jackie, realistically, can we see NIP or Mouse making Finals themselves, like to the Grand Final? But after what we saw yesterday from NIP, I'm struggling to even make that question for you, to give you that question. So instead, I'm going to ask you, what is the realistic expectations for both NIP and Mouse after the results that they had yesterday? I mean, this is the thing. I think for Mouse, they definitely have a good season ahead of them, but there's still a whole lot that needs to go on. 
I, I mean, you know, I personally still don't agree with the decision they made with the, the cut of Chris J. Oscar is a talented player, but I feel like he's too volatile for that lineup. And there was issues in the past, you know, that, that was set precedent off the basis of what we saw when he came into the team. And I just don't know how it's going to go with them. I feel like they can definitely, uh, you know, really achieve something this season, but they need to bring their A game to the table. As for Nip, I feel like it, it just looks like it's, it's kind of too far gone for me. It's, it's really odd. It just seemed like even though they had the passion, you can tell they're a team that definitely had that behind them, you know, by their reactions post game after, you know, they realized what happened, they were just like, okay, we don't, we don't know how this happened. You know, we, we just got beat straight up. And this is the thing, Heroic definitely, you know, they're not a bad team. It's not like we're sticking our noses up at them. It's just, this was an upset. You know, this was straight up the underdogs coming in massively off the back of relegation. They look dominant. They've been improving and improving more and more. And it's great to see, you know, Heroic in that position, but it, it was definitely odd. So it's going to be a hard one to call, but I definitely think there is a good season ahead of Mouse Sports. But for Nip, I, I just don't need it to semi-finals last season. I would expect them both to be up there. NIP definitely have what it takes to turn this around. Mm. I mean, I don't want to count them out just yet. They could come out and completely... You know where they lie right now. You would expect them to, you know, be posting better results than what they currently are. Considering both today and we'll be like, okay, NIP are yeah, back, that's form, fine. Yeah. The fans will be like, yeah, this is great, NIP are back. But we, we, we spoke about Dust2 a little bit and you've kind of given me your prediction then. Okay, let's, let's move over to Train, where NIP really struggled uh, yesterday on Train against Heroic, losing 16 to 11, as I said. There was a... A few flaws in, in their T side, but there was obviously flaws in their CT side as well. You said Get Right mm. had a lot of important decisions to make when he was down in pop. Who do we need to be looking at from Mouse though to kind of to kind of change the game on train? Where are they going to be able to exploit the weaknesses from NIP? It's going to be interesting for me because I want to see what Oscar's going to bring to the table on that T side, especially when he has the AWP in his hand because he's going for you know a lot of aggressive style of CS. There is a lot you can achieve with the AWP on you know on train. It's one of those maps that is scope heavy on either side, depending on where you're playing. You know, from that CT half or T half, it can be very effective and it is needed to be brought out. You know, we see double AWP setups being donned fairly often, and it's just of how of how vital the weapon can be to stop pushes, really give you those opening frags, and allow you to set a precedent of how you're going to take this one and set the pace of the game very early. So Oscar's should be quite important going into that matchup. But obviously, Nico as well is always that star player. He just has so much individual skill. He's very talented, and he just has a great understanding of the game in terms of his, you know, his own restrictions. He knows when he should back off from a fight. He knows when he should take a confrontation. He doesn't really overextend too much. You know, in the past, that used to be slightly an issue, but, you know, he's very tame. He's tame, but he's also very volatile. So he's a great player to watch in those sort of scenarios. I feel like it is going to be reliant on those two in Mouse. And if you had to go for a kind of score prediction on train? Obviously, with Chain, it's hard to call because Train is a map that Nip are superior on. I feel like, you know, Nip used to have a really great Train, so it was weird when we saw that result coming in there with Heroic, but it just looked sloppy. You know, there was nothing in there at all. Their T side looked barren. There was nothing they brought to the table. It just looked like they were banging their heads off the wall over and over again. So I feel like Nip really, if they want to come into this, need to roll back the years. They need to, you know, get that confidence back, come in with a reset today. And that's, the, that's the, one of the things as well we need to speak about is the fact that yesterday they were just absolutely defeated. You could tell, you know, how affected it was after Heroic just dominated them going through those, those two games. So they need to snap out of that, come back in today fresh, and really bring it to the table. Because Train is a map they can win on, and, you know, I'll be surprised if once again Miles are able to, to overpower them. Because if, if, you know, if they go down 4-0 already this early on into Pro League, it's, it's going to be a bit of a shame for them. <laughs> it would be more than a shame. I think there will be a lot of unhappy fans, and they are obviously a huge team with a massive fan base. And a question I'm going to pose to you is, if they do go 4-0 down, if they've lost four maps on the trot, I mean, at what point does a team like Nip even consider making a roster change? I mean, is that something that may be going through kind of managers' minds, coaches' mind, even players' mind, if you have lost four on the bounce? Bear in mind, they're also losing elsewhere as well. It isn't just in Pro League that they've lost. They've lost in other tournaments. As I said, a five-match competitive loss streak. What's your thoughts? You know, I don't think it'd be anything as drastic as making that sort of player lineup right now. It would take a lot more of that, obviously, you know, getting Pitt to, to sort of stay around for this long, you know. He's been moulding with the team a lot better recently. You know, there was that issue where I believe that they, you know, uh, Disco Doppin was stepping in for a little while, but that was quite a little while ago now. And, you know, it works. It just isn't working to the best of their capability. I feel like Nip right now are just, they're just all off. They just need to come back together, get back on form. As we saw moments of individual strength that was coming out from them. Forest was sort of rolling back the years. It was vintage Forest we saw in a few of the rounds of yesterday's games, but we just need that more consistently. And that's what I feel like is the biggest hindrance to Nip right now. There is no consistency. There's no texture. It just all falls away. No texture. There's no texture. Just need to get a little bit of it. product. A little bit of wax. Unscrew really buff it, it in there. get it in Get Right's hair, and then he'll be ready. He's also, I think he's got rid of the moustache now. He did that, he was donning that moustache for a while. Didn't look 
fantastic. He looked alright. You're not a fan? Um, of moustaches in general? Yeah, or? what are your thoughts? I mean, I I can't grow facial hair, so... Um, Me neither. No? No. What is that on your face, then? It's a caterpillar. Okay, great. Uh, I think we are almost ready to get going into this game. It is going to be Dust2, the first match between NIP and Maus. I'm excited for it because... I think this is a real chance for NOP to turn things mm -hmm. around. Obviously, after an unsuccessful day yesterday, and they can put that to bed, and now they can come out against Mouse, who had, well, a relatively good game yesterday. And, and if NIP can beat Mouse, then they can be like, okay, they took down Astralis. Astralis are major winners. Yes, we could just ignore what happened to Heroic. We can move into this. We can move on, and we can start looking towards finals. We can become the NIP that everyone knows we are capable of. As we are getting into the first game, as I said, just to... NIP versus Mouse, and this is going to be an exciting one as they're going to be a very aggressive push into B, but Forest, Vintage Forest with the one tap. But thankfully, Lower will come in to get the response, and they do have control of this B site now. Yeah, he knows how to hold that USP, so it was a great opener for Forest. Lau firing back very heavily, though. He's one of those massive explosive players as well. Mouse Sports have an abundance of talent on that lineup, and you're going to see that just in terms of individual strength. They're all mad fraggers, they really can pop off. Oh, Spitty is going to chime in. Luckily steps up to the mark as he takes down Exist, and it falls to get right in Freiburg. The bomb hasn't gone down, though, but the bomb, the bomb site is completely in Mouse Sports' control. Well, they can just hold out for now. They have the kit on Freiburg. They don't need to charge their way in all heavy-handed. They can just bide their time. They're making Maus a little bit nervous here, but Freiburg very low on health. They are going to jump up. They are going to challenge it. They're going to have to back off because they're low on health as well. Bomb now goes down. And get right here. Trying to get an angle on anyone. You see Lauer is there, very low on health. Just trying to tag anyone, but he's... No, that's Freiburg down. So it just leaves get right on his own. Just go for the 1v3. Yeah. But Nico walks around the corner with a one tap. Maus get the pistol, and they can start things off in style. And NIP starting things off how they ended it yesterday, to be honest. And they, they had a, a few opening frags. I thought it was good as soon as Forrest got that one tap as they started rushing in towards B, but he wasn't able to follow up. It's almost like they were caught by surprise. Weren't expecting that fast B rush from Mouse. And that was just nice play from Lau, though, really coming out there. You know, he was able to get that double kill. He was sort of the, the gel in the round that really broke down the armaments of Ninjas in Pajamas. Oscar as well. He will go for the Scout by a weapon. He's he's very favorable. That's the thing as well. Scout is a great weapon you can utilize on Dust2. It's one of these maps that complements uh, it very nicely. You're able to roam a lot with it. You can be quite organic. And he is going to get a massive tag off early into the round. Dennis is going to try and capitalize off the back of that. Will wandle his way out. Thanks down, Piff. Very easily. Quite early on into the round, but already damage has been done to the side of Nip. Yeah, smoke at the ready, but they're going to get charged by Forrest, who picks up two. And this is the perfect way to get back into the game, but it is a 3v3, and Forrest has to back off to CT. Knows that there is someone on A site, that's why he's a little bit worried he's going to get dropped from behind as Nico is creeping and crawling onto the A site himself. Does check all of the angles. We'll give a shout out to Oscar to come and plant this bomb, and NIP are going to have to retake once again. Planning it for good visuals from long here, as Lowell is now just in middle, trying to one-tap through, finds Get Right and Freiburg. Can he find the third to finish things off? Yes, he can. Great stuff with the AK. And it looked like NIP had a chance with those two frags from Forrest, but thankfully, good AK work to keep Mouse at a 2-0 lead. Yeah, great way to work your way through it there. He's going to try and keep this ball rolling. Secure all three of those rounds off the back of that pistol round win. Dennis, reading the economy as well. And we'll go for that MAC-10 so we can try and rack up a little bit of cash. What are Nip going to bring to the table, though? Seems like we'll be going for a bit of a long push to try and work your way through. Obviously, you can't really play out these eco rounds like a full bite. Can't play it like a gun round. You have to just try and throw a spanner into the works. Get right, we'll just lurk his way on that B-bomb site. Hide him behind the boxes so they won't be able to spot him out. And he will get all of the information and then his teammates can just attempt to do something. They haven't invested much into the round as well, so it doesn't matter if they try and go for this. Tiptoeing out is going to be Mouse Sports, though. And when does Get Right pop out? Then he goes. That Lowell is having none of it. Takes him down. They'll be able to put this bomb on the B site, and everyone else is at A. Freiburg gets a pick onto Dennis, though. That might be a weapon that they are able to recuperate and, and fit into their push, but they do have the advantage. Mouse here. That should be very easy for them. It's just pistols to work for. No retake coming out of NIP. They're just going to try and get some weapons for themselves. And I wonder where, wonder whether Oscar is going to walk into Freiburg's trap here. But even if he does, I still felt like it's going to be difficult for him to pick up the kill. Forest. He yeah, has been doing an efficient job with that USP so far into the game. Unfortunately, he isn't going to be able to take down Lau. That has just been tearing Ninja as a new one so far. Oh, Freiburg as well, nearly getting chopped up. He wanted to try and take him down with that knife. Unfortunately, he won't quite be able to do so. Freiburg firing back with the scout but will be punished by Nico. That is so cheeky that he's gone for that. 
just great guessing work. He's yeah. thinking, oh yeah, there's probably a guy here in A-Long. We've checked pretty much everywhere else. I don't think he had had the information just yet. And look at that being highlighted. Wow, eight kills already after three rounds. But now we're getting to the interesting stuff. We get the buy from NIP. And it's wonder. I wonder whether they're going to be able to hold here. Really important. They struggled yesterday in these kind of rounds, and they now they need to perform. They need to show their fans what they're made of and get back on track here in the ESL Pro League. Yeah, this is going to be a massively important first fall by coming into this. Great play as well from Oscar early on into the round. Gets that tag off on towards Get Right, knocking him down to just 35 HP. And you can see they will be tiptoeing their way through, trying to get this control here. Nico just going for the spam, seeing if he can do you know, any more damage. On those players, the mid to B smokes will go up. Nadens are short as well as transferring any damage. Anyone just hiding, waiting to peek out. Oscar trying to take an angle here. See if anyone is going to peek out through middle, but nothing just yet as his teammates are going to edge their way up to short, see if they can get any more information as well. There is going to be a couple of members of NOP on the site that will be more than ready if they do push short here. Grenade will come out as well. Oscar now just down to 50 HP, but Nico is going to be the entry fragger here. He's not so sure about it. He's going to line up a smoke instead. Does look like it is going to be an A site execute. Well, as I see that, he's just going to smoke and back off. They fake. They wait. And this is like train yesterday, to be honest. Wasting all this time, but not drawing out much utility from Mouse. Yeah, just on their angles for the meantime on the side of Mouse. They are going to be waiting before they go for this mid to be execute. Slipping their way through. Exist will chime in, though. He's able to eliminate Spitty very quickly. Nicely played, actually backs off through the smoke as well, so he's going to stay alive into this. And this forces the hand of Mouse now. They don't have too long to play with any 26 seconds on the clock. They have to sprint their way towards B. Forest will take down Oscar. The Battle of the Orps commences there and ends very quickly. Fires again through the smoke, eliminates loud, juicy stuff on display. Nico is on the scene of the crime, but will get taken down as well by Freiburg. And that is a nice round from the Nuzan Pajamas. Just what they needed to get back into the game. Exactly what they needed indeed. Good work. And <laughs> it's always nice hitting uh, hitting those shots through the smoke as well. It was a little bit fortunate. We'll even watch it twice. Why the hell not? Great double kill from Forrest. And now we move in to round number five. There is money to work with for Mouse as well. They're gonna try and get an AWP down here. See if they can find any through through middle as well, but Forrest is gonna be the challenge that they have to try and overcome. And then he backs off to B site here. And what kind of difference do we need to see from Mouse if they're going to be able to do anything with a buy round? They they struggled last round. They didn't really know where they were going to go, Jackie. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. They wanted to try and just go for that fake play towards the A-bomb site. Smoked over and then backed off with that mid to B strike. Existed a great job of getting that frag off as well. You know, it slowed them down for long enough. And Forrest just went huge towards the B-bomb site after they'd forced their hand. They had to push out. Time was limited. They ran straight into his crosshairs and he just took them down one by one. Into this as well, once again. Going to be getting that map control very easily. Lax played towards mid, and they are just going to be watching it from that B bomb site. But short play will be coming out. Dennis leading the charge here, just scoping in, checking in case anyone is playing from Gandalf. The smokes will go over. Why is it called Gandalf? See, no one knows. Don't I've know, asked man. so many people that question. No one knows. As I said, people just prop out, pop out and say, You shall not pass. That's my only reason. That's all I can think of. As the flashes will now come out, and Mouse are going to gallop towards the A site. Freiburg has had to back off the long. He has got a teammate there with him. They're just being wary of that backstab as Freiburg will get a nice headshot onto Dennis now. And they're just going to wait around as Lowell is the man they are worried about from pushing A long. They do have the man advantage now, Mouse, though. Thankfully, Nico gets the frag on to exist. The bomb goes down. So Lowell with a lot of responsibility. I wonder how long they're going to wait at A to see if anyone is going to come through these A doors. Yeah. They have all that information as well. That will try and strike now. Great play from the man as you see him sliding his way through. Takes down Freiburg, Spitty as well. One off on towards both. Forrest will take down Nico, but it's short lived before he gets traded out by Oscar. A mouse sports bounce straight back into it, busting the economy of ninjas in pajamas. A lot better from Mouse. They still took their time, but they were able to get onto that site. Uh, I think the important thing was they were able to push NIP back to long, and they waited so long at long watching A doors, and as soon as they turn away, that was when Lau. Came in with the strike. And it is just going to be an eco for NIP now. A chance for Mouse to create a very nice cushion early on in Dust 2 here. As Oscar still just trying to find anything through mid doors. Nico's found his way onto B site. And we'll also find the head of Forest. Get right, having none of it. He's backing off. Doesn't want to take the fight. Does try and go for the jumping pistol shot. It's not going to happen today. 
No. Look at this mid aggression coming out though from Nip. It will be Exist leading the charge all the way through. Lau is aware of the positioning though and just lines it up and takes him down very quickly. And now falls into the last two remaining members of the side. Ooh, get right. Snapped his neck there clean off by Nico. Uh, it's just pit left all on his lonesome coming up long. And the bomb will go down. Such a difficult round for NIP though. They tried to get a little bit over aggressive. They extended into both mid and, and, and A and tried to find any sort of information. But unfortunately for them, Mouse were more than ready and punished them. And look at that. Wow. 12 kills. Pytho doesn't have any yet. Needs to find one. Needs to get some confidence. Needs to eject that confidence into NIP. They look a little bit lacklustre. This is their chance to get back into it now with some money. And Pyth on that on those zero kills has an AWP. Perhaps this is his chance to put some points on the board. Yeah, there is that possibility. Towards the bomb site though, you can see three players grouped up in upper times right now as they just hold their hold their own for the meantime. Aren't gonna overextend too far and burst their way into the site. Get right is there just holding the angle. Nice little double boost being utilized on towards shorts. You can pick up the top of the smoke and look out, see if anyone is gonna be there. But no one was around. I think to be seen. Wait for the smoke to disperse now. The Molotovs will go in. The flashbang into the site and then they'll explode their way out. So much on get right here. He can get one or two as his teammates do finally join him. He gets the first onto Dennis, but they are going to continue with their push, but they're going to meet Forrest as well, who gets the second. Spitty takes down get right, so now it's just Forrest as the only point of defense. And the M4 won't quite be enough as Oscar picks up the kill, but now Forrest comes in and gets one thanks to Exist, who just has Nico to work against. And he's on short, so he wasn't involved in that push whatsoever. And he's going to be thinking, what went wrong? It was looking like there were some good trades going on, as he's going to push mid, try and find Freiburg, but Freiburg's just got a pistol to work with, so Nico should win this encounter, which he does. Gets him through the wall, and now it's a one versus two. Yeah, Nico, the one-man army of mouse sports. If there's anyone you'd want alive in this situation, it would be him. How's that Molotov to work with? Gonna track it into the site, last straight on window, dive straight through, that's smart play actually, confusing them obviously, they wouldn't think he'd go straight through window off the back of that Molotov, he tried to go for it, didn't really work out though, unfortunately Exist was able to pick him off, very interesting there. Big round for NIP, but their money isn't great, actually, still got just about enough to work with, it isn't going to be uh, an incredible buy, you can see UMP coming through, but UMP, a very powerful weapon, too powerful some would say. As Mouse with still with four AKs and the AWP in the hands of Oscar. And Oscar is actually going to go through this smoke here, see if he can get an opening pick. Freiburg is going to be defending here with the UMP, but Oscar comes through and gets the, Was that through the smoke? I think it was. I think he just went off the back of his teammate there and just was able to take him out with that pot shot. And Oscar, he, you know, he's dangerous with the AWP. And that double AWP setup being in play from Nip as well, it's going to be interesting to see how well that goes down. Forest towards mid hasn't been able to sniff anyone out just yet. As everyone just takes map control over towards long and just holds their own. A lot of pressure on Forrest here. If they do push middle, we saw earlier he had to take a pistol fight when uh, Nico tried to get through those doors because he didn't want to take the AWP in such close range as Lal. Trying to take an easy peek. Just going to throw a grenade as well as he's going to push up a long. And Pyth. Sitting on site, needs to get some kills with this AWP as well. The double AWP isn't going to happen though, because Oscar comes in and gets a kill with the AWP of his own. Lau is going to push around smoke, will be aware. Someone is just to his left, doesn't get sprayed on though. Exist gets the kill. Can anyone get the trade off? No, Exist backs off through the smoke, continues to spray. He is worried about short though, as Flashbang will come out. He's going to be full white, but thankfully Get Right is there to save his back. And Forrest gets one of his own, leaving just Oscar and Spiddy. Bomb goes down though. There is every chance, because Get Right is very weak here. Yeah, get right, just on one HP, but he's still alive and he will still be trying to fight through to win this round. You can see that flank coming in from get right as well. He'll be the one coming from long. He needs to shut down Oscar in this scenario. Spiddy, meanwhile, will just be covering short. Is Oscar going to be aware of this? Sitting in pit. He's slightly sticking out. Get right. Really has to try and find this frag. We'll see him popping out. Fantastic job done by the man. It just falls into a two versus one now. Spitty trying to fight from short. Unfortunately, can't quite connect the shot off on towards Exist. They're going to sprint their way up onto that site. They do have the kit and will defuse the bomb just in the nick of time. That's a lot better from NIP as well. Fans will start to just breathe a little bit more. And NIP getting back into this game now. And money-wise for Mouse, they should be able to still work out a bite. However, they've got to be worried about losing this next one because there's going to be 
extremely harmful to their economy if they do lose, and that will really allow NIP back into this game. On the other end, Mouse might be able to put another one on the board. Suddenly they're looking like favourites once again. They're just going to buy up. They have got the Scout and Tech-9 to work with alongside the AKs and Galil. I want to see something different from Mouse now. They've tried the slow approach. They had the fast approach earlier, which worked in the pistol round. Aren't going to burst out of anywhere just yet, though. Still waiting. Hoping the NIP will overextend slightly, but I'm not sure anyone on the NIP is going to play ball with that. Yeah, just holding their angles. You can see Mouse as well, seeing if they can be drawn out here. Oscar, even with the scout in his hands, will still be fairly dangerous. And they don't really need to do too much into this. They have a lot of time to play, so there's no reason to just rush in. They have a lot of utility as well. Exist. Take a couple of shots off towards mid. Can't quite find anything just yet, but meanwhile, Oscar is reigning supreme with that scout. We said he can do damage. He actually bests Forest as well, so that's quite a massive frag to open this round. Absolutely huge frag with Forest going down. Exist will try and get the spray down on the, the aggressive push from middle, but he's going to be smoked off now, so he's going to jump. Well, he tried to jump up onto box, and there we go. So we're going to look over the smoke, seeing if anyone is going to push up to B. But no one is just yet, actually. Spitty's considering going up short. He's got several teammates behind him. Is blind at the moment. And he's going to back off. And Mouse just running down that time, trying to waste NIP's utility. As Nico is going to push onto B site here. He doesn't spot Get Right just yet. Get Right always lurking around this B site. And he will get the kill onto Nico. Get Right, I don't know how he always does it. Just manages to stay unseen so well. He is the, truly the king of lurking. And now the push onto short is going to happen. Oh, and there you go. Pi 4 kick it off as he comes in with that frag off on towards Dennis and doubles it up. Takes down another man in Lao. Exist is there fighting through as well. I can't quite connect onto the third one. It matter as Freiburg was on the scene. And will reign supreme. Does eliminate Spiddy. Very nicely done by Ninja Jump with Armors there. A whole lot better. Mouse Sports, also the economy being broken. They're going to have to try and work their way through this just on those measly pistols. A good time for Pyfe to pick up his opening frags of the game as well. In an extremely important round where now. As you said, Mouse struggling for money. It's just going to have to be a full eco. So I wonder if they're going to go for anything a little bit extravagant, a little bit different. Or if they're just going to try and hope. Once again, NIP will get overzealous. As Forrest picks up the opening one onto Nico. Nice early kill for them. Nothing crazy is going to happen just yet. Dennis does take the fight lower tons. But Forrest, once again, is there with Exist. And that just leaves Lowell. And this is... Well, it was going to be a formality anyway. I wasn't really expecting anything too crazy from Miles. They didn't go for a fast B push or a fast A burst. Instead, they just walked in to the SMG. And look at that. 12 kills for Forrest here. And he's built up a bit of a bank balance by getting those kills as well. Yeah, that's nice use of economy management there. You know, you get that MP9 out. You know your opponent's... Uh on lesser weapons, you can just really rack up a lot of cash for it. Sticking with it as well into this, going to use it as a little bit of a scouting weapon. Knows it doesn't matter too much if he dies. I'm not going to see anything too flamboyant from there. I thought we might see a bit of an aggression coming out. Towards short though, look at this once again, around for that boost. They can speak out, get all that information on mid. That's going to be in that elevated angle, just looking down. Really useful to, you know, bring this into the table. You get a lot of information off the back of it. And they will spot out two players towards lower as well and fall back. I wonder whether Forrest is going to peek. Yes, he will, but he is flashbang, but he gets the kill onto Nico. Speedy trades, and now Dennis is going to be smoked off as well. As soon as he thought about making a step forward through middle, the utility comes out from NIP once again. It is a 4v4 situation, so an advantage, I would say, to Mouse here, because NIP are having to split up as Lal is now considering pushing through A long. will be greeted by Freiburg as Get Right gets a kill onto Oscar as well. So the advantage back in NIP's court, but... Great stuff from Freiburg holding this, and the trade's not going to come through because Spitty was flashed there as Freiburg gets aggressive, but he doesn't even need to because Pyth comes through with the AWP, and he's really starting to rack up those kills now after a somewhat lackluster start. As Dennis is a creeping onto a site, and he has been spotted by Pyth, who adds another one to his tally. Yeah, this is really, you know, a big step up for him as well. Four kills on the board now. It was a long time coming. He wasn't performing too well early on into the game, but now, well, since he's got the AWP in his hands, definitely started to bring a lot more to the side of Nip. Now, sports as well, you can see that economy is still broken as they just want to return to the wise with the pistols. They do have some damaging pistol players on that side, though. Nico and Lau with those double deagles. Those might be interesting to see what they can bring. It's scary how often the deagles work, but... You're not going to get the chance to if Forrest is hitting headshots through smoke like that as they're going to take an aggressive stance through short here. Our Molotov off, so can't get as quick as they would have liked. And the smoke's also going to come out as well to delay any sort of rush. So well played by NIP, NIP to just delay this. Give them as much time as possible and just try and frustrate Mouse. Who wanted to really burst out onto site. They wanted to try and 
get the jump onto NIP, but it's not going to happen as Dennis is boosted on top of Lal here. Trying to get a little bit of information as he just throws himself down onto CT and he's going to maybe find the kill. No, he can't. I thought he should have picked that one up, but Freiburg will get it. And Pyth finds himself on long with the AWP as well. But Spiddy gets two of his own. Yeah, that was nice to see. Very interesting run boost there. That was pretty cool. Unfortunately, didn't work out too amazingly, but definitely did a bit of damage. And they're in a great spot to actually pick up this round now. Two versus two. They're in good after plant. And they have that weapon over on Spiddy. Oh, he's also getting a kill with it as he picks off Forest. Nico just looking around with the Deagle in his hands and it falls to get right. He can clutch. We've seen it in the past. We know how proficient he can be in these scenarios. But is this going to be get right stay? Or will Malsport shut him down? Get another round on the board as he tiptoes his way through, slowly creeping towards ramp. The angle isn't covered, but they now are aware of his positioning. He has to try and do something fast, and it isn't going to work out. But he gets another frag into the round. That's a 4k for the man stepping up in that round. And these are the rounds that I said NIP shouldn't be losing. There is no way they should have lost that round against the a very awkward eco bite. Well, it was like they, they had a few flashes, they had a smoke, but it was pistols and tech nines. But that run boost was was extremely interesting. They're just throwing himself down to CT. Unfortunately, it didn't really work, but it was was somewhat of a distraction as Nico was able to push on and get those early frags. And now it's all tied up here, six to six, and Mouse with money to work with once again. And despite NAP losing that, of course, they still have plenty of money. Gone for the double up setup now, and Mouse going to take the aggressive stance once again on, onto short here. It has been their favoured push. I'm not entirely surprised if you can do it without guns. Surely you can do it with guns, Jackie. Yeah, definitely so. I mean, you know, it's common sense into that. And once again, they're just playing it slow as they hold these angles. Mouse sports have been doing a good job of actually forcing out some of the utility from the side of Nip though. And this double up setup, you know, I, I feel like we haven't seen too much from Forrest into these early rounds. He's been getting shut down quite a lot. Oh. Towards many will try and achieve something there. He's got the odd frag here and there, but needs to try and link some more together. This time around, he wasn't able to get that opener like he did. And they went up short. Didn't get the information from it as well. Here's those meant to be smokes. And the aggression comes out, trying to force the hand. Plot that seed of doubt in the mind of Nip, making them believe that it will be that mid to be play. And they will burst out of short on towards that A bomb site. Yeah, Forrest is unaware of what's going on right now. He was just looking into the smoke, hoping someone was coming behind him, but they weren't. As Dennis is going to back off just in case there's any rotations coming from mid. As they are going to push through mid doors. And they are going to be greeted by Get Right. He's going to hit first point of contact and he manages to take down Spiddy. But Lau comes in with a trade, and they need to be careful of this AWP from Forrest now that is in B site. He's still worried about tons, as Pyth gets one from A-Long as well. So they are currently surrounded by AWPs, but thankfully Oscar comes in and finds two on Pyth and Freiburg. So it is just Forrest with that AWP. You said he needed to step up. You said he hasn't done too much since the early rounds, but he finds one onto Lau. But Oscar comes in to finish the round off, and Mouse go up 7-6, to six, gaining the lead once again. Yeah, that was great play from Oscar there as well. Going on to get that 3k. Two fantastic orb shots, then finishing off Forest towards the end of that. And uh, nip in terms of economy as well. It's not mind-blowing at all. Get right, 6k on the board, and the rest of them leveling around 2k. They will be able to get that orb out. And they have something to work with, but it's just not a fantastic buy. Not too, uh, too consistent into this. What they actually achieve? Get right's going to stick with the AWP as well as he plays over towards that B bomb site still. Early peek out on towards long from Mouseports. Freiburg is on the scene, but only has that P250 in hand. His teammate will come over to try and help him out. They have that three man stack, but short control has been compromised. Dennis, as he bursts his way out, shutting down Pyth. Now that A bomb site has a welcome out on it. Yeah, they've got the aim bomb site and they've also got exist as well. So just three players remaining now. Forrest also gets shut down, so that leaves Freiburg on his own down at long. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Mouse put the eighth on the board now. And a 9 6 would be a really good half for them on T side. And they are going to be facing up against an NIP once again, trying to make what they can do with this money. I mean, look at it. It's very sparse. They can just use the scout and, uh, well, Deagle. A couple of CZs. It's going to be an extremely difficult round for them. Maybe we're going to expect something different. And it's an aggressive stance. Maybe a push together. Really risky plays. Might pay off here. And this Rad's on Oscar trying to get this pick towards that big bomb site as well. They know where Get Right plays and they get a huge tag off early. They're going to force him out of position using that utility. Get Right actually goes in the aggressive. He's going to reposition just play close by first box there as they work their way towards lower. But look at the mass rotate this has caused. As you can see, all of Ninja Pajamas shuffling around to try and adjust this as they get picked off one by one. Nico towards mid, though, will get bested by Forrest. Nice use of the scout there. Can he get anything else out of this? Just trying to stay alive, trying to hold on as Dennis watches the cross. Yeah, just Dennis. Trying to watch anything, see if he can catch anyone. Forrest's only on 5 HP as well. 
A lot on get right with this AK. As now Forrest goes down, so it is all on get right. Needs to get three kills here. Would be a 4k in total. His bomb has gone down. It's going to be watched from long though. He's just keeping an eye on pits and if he can see anyone. He might have seen a head bobbing. Doesn't look like he has though because his crosshair hasn't just moved. Throws a Molotov towards short. Does force the player out but he can back off. He's going to just tap the defuse but Dennis cleans it up. Finishes the round. That will be a 9-6 advantage for Mouse Sports here. And that will be half time. So we're going to go for a short break. We'll see you soon. Impressive first half from Mouse in the end there. It looked like they were going to completely dominate it, and then NIP came back into it, brought it back to 5-5, and then something slipped away again. Uh, anything you can you can di diagnose? Can you dissect from that first half? I don't know really. I mean, it's just that kind of odd. You know, Nip had a bit of a slow start, slow burner, started to step it up towards the end there. Uh, it was just really play a, a good play style. You know, the Fet Mouse Sports there was they were playing with that slower sort of style of CS. A lot of mind games going into it, a lot of lampooning. They tricked everyone quite a few times. It worked out quite nicely. Oscar had a few great openers into it as well. And they tried some spicy stuff. That's the thing. Like, you know, there was a few rounds where it was looking a little bit experimental. We saw that run boost that came out where Dennis was propelled on towards long. Oh, yeah, he did get one frag off of it. It was cool to see as well. You know, it creates enough of a distraction that they could then leak their way out on towards that A bomb site. And that was a huge round from Spitty as well. A 4K that came out of the man. Someone, you know, has definitely been touched on, you know, are him and Dennis performing up to par? And that was a good round. He needed something like that to sort of, you know, bring himself up there and sort of work on that and it was a good way to kick it off. Can I ask what is lampooning? Lampooning, you know, to get lampooned. But yeah, in game... It's trickery. Well, it's, okay, you know, tr trickery. Yeah. So in game if someone fakes and double fakes... They I, it's, it's not a CS lampooned. term. It's, it's not it's a CS Jackie term, it's just... Yeah. CS term. Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's from fine. Peep Show. I kind of so. like it. We yeah. can bring it in, we can make it a, a cool thing. But yeah, I think you were right. Um, the difference maker for me is Mouse, yes, okay, they were running the clock down, similarly to what NIP were doing yesterday on train. But the big difference is they were forcing the utility out of NIP, mm. which is what NIP weren't doing against Heroic yesterday. So they were putting in players in different positions, making noise, throwing a, maybe a smoke of their own or a flash of their own to get those responding flashes. And it's looked great from Mouse, to be honest. And now the big question is, can they continue to be this strong on their CT side? Yeah, it's definitely, you know, it's it's up for a thought because going into it, they have had a lot of good aim starts. That's the thing. You've got a lot of potential there just in terms of rifling capability. Lau and Nico were on point today. Lau had a great start to the game. He just ripped his way through everyone. That pistol was basically off the back of him just single-handedly destroying Nip very early on. You know, it seemed like Nip had a good start. Forrest came in with the opening frag. Lau just shut it down immediately and said, not today. And it allowed them to get that good start. Now, this is the thing. Lau and Nico, they've been performing well. Oscar as well with that AWP has got those AWP skills. And that CT side on Dust 2 is essentially just lie and wait, wait for the push to come to you. There's not too much you can really do on it extension-wise. Sure, you can have a few aggressive plays uh, towards tunnels and towards mid as well if you want to try and take that aggression in the early game, especially towards short as well. You have the potential with the AWP to try and go for those slightly more aggressive plays, but it's quite tame. So really, as long as they hold their angles, hit their shots like we've seen in the past, they should do so well. But talking about aggression, Oscar is the man to do so all the way up top mid. Look at the amount of information he's got here. Oh, God. This could be ugly if he's able to get through long and find some of these players. It depends if they dilly-dally and bide their time going up a long. It does look like they are making a relatively quick move up a long. They're trying to make not make any noise, but now here comes the movement. The pistol sprays come through as the push through middle happens at the same time. But Spitty is there to get the opening frag. Nico trying to get 
up on short here. Exist is well aware now of that rotation round onto long, and they've got the bomb down. But in comes the mouse train. Let's just get right left. And there's just pistol shots everywhere. And Mouse continuing their form from the first half perfectly. Yes, the Molotov's going to be down, but they have got plenty of time to defuse this one. They are going to take a 10-6 lead now. And I am slightly concerned for NIP because they're possibly looking at a 12-6 deficit. If we judge from their performance yesterday, their terrorist performance in particular, they really did struggle. Their executions were poor. They seemed to run out of ideas. They, they just couldn't draw out the... Of the, draw out the utility of their opponents. So we're going to expect to see more. Um, I'd like to see more adventure from them. I'd like to see them try something a little bit different. We obviously didn't see them on Dust. And I mean, if, if anyone's going to be good on Dust, you'd expect NIP to be good on Dust as the four UMPs and a scout is going to come out from Mouse here. Yeah. Look at that. The four UMP buys, obviously, the SMGs. They're capable of good range. Cap uh, you know, they're capable of of good range, you know how to utilize them in those sort of situations, they are definitely effective. And you have the scout over on Oscar as well. And that weapon is so vital on a map like this, yeah. You can be very agile with it, the movement's a whole lot better. And Oscar just dispatches everyone normally on Dust T with the scout, so a standard buy for him. Meanwhile, Nip, they're just going for a essentially full save into this round. Wanted to try and rack up all the cash, but meanwhile, Lau is going to be the one doing so. Sprays down, eliminates Forest and Exist, get right will fire back, and is able to grab that UMP as well. But it's looking shaky. Yeah, at least they've been able to pick up that one opening frag. Now they've got something to work with at least. Freiburg might find a rotating Dennis, but nope, Dennis says no. He is going to get that, and he's going to push behind them onto A long, and he should be able to pick up both of these if he plays his cards right, which he does. Full house. Good night. 11 to 6. A nice, easy anti eco round for them in the end. We have seen teams struggle with those kind of rounds. And well, we did yesterday anyway. NIP actually struggled with these kind of rounds when they were on the opposing end, but. Mouse keeping it clean, well drilled, well oiled, and a nice rotation in the end from Dennis that did finish it off. But NIP do have the money to work with here, Jackie. They can buy up, thankfully, because that bomb went down. Yeah, they got all those full AKs. Uh, utility's looking fairly effective as well. They have a lot to hope in terms of smokes. They've got those flashbangs. Not too many Molotovs, though. Can't really zone anyone out of positions. They will just have to use those smokes to block off lines of sight. Right now, just holding slow as well. Fifth towards mid, just trying to find a frag as he taps over that AK-47, but can't quite connect on to anyone. The angle is being watched by Oscar. But he moves slightly out of the way. Oh, that headshot comes in as well. Such a juicy little frag there. Goes back for more. Will land attack, but couldn't quite finish him off just yet, as Freiburg will respond with a wall bang. One of those situations where you've hit one headshot, you think you can probably hit the world, but unfortunately you can't. And now the advantage for NIP. They are facing up against three UMPs as well. So that's why there are some slightly aggressive positions from Mouse. You can see here Nico holding a tight angle on short. But no one's going to play ball just yet. As Exist is trying to get some information here. MB tunnels. As Nico does overextend slightly. He wanted to do something with that UMP. But Frobo can get right now. Get kills of their own. Leaving just Dennis and Spiddy with these UMPs. And Dennis doesn't really know what's happening. They are going to rotate. They think it's an A take. But actually, there is no take happening right now. NIP are just biding their time and they're waiting for more overextensions. Yeah, it's my mind games of them, forcing them to peak. Uh, Mouse sports right now are looking really aggressive. They've won quite a few faces that were unnecessary. And given Jamama's early kills that they didn't need to, they didn't have to go for some of these faces. So Nip are just you know, using that to their advantage. They know they can force their hand. But he does have Molotov to work with. A little bit of not enough utility though. As bomb finally goes down, and they will force Mouse out of hiding. And just as the bomb goes down, Forrest finishes it off. NIP back into the swing of things. They've got a round on the board now. But Mouse can buy up. Not going to drop weapons here, there, and everywhere. It's not going to be a perfect buy, but it's still going to be something they can work from. And NIP just need, need to string some rounds together now. Need to get that confidence back in their boots. As Oscar is going to take a, an aggressive stance here in mid, try and find anyone rotating across, moving across, but there isn't going to be anyone walking across his crosshair today. Yeah, as they try and take that control once again towards Long Forest, just bounded his way out. That's a lot of information off the back of it. You can see the shaky buy on mouse sports affect their style of play. Oscar does have the AWP though, and he's so damaging with it. Comes in with a Great opener off on towards Piff. Is able to take him down. Repositions as well. He's roaming quite a lot here. That's what he needs to do in this round. He has to try and gel it all together. As he really needs to kind of be the key. Dennis does have that M4, but he just needs to stay alive in this scenario. 
Tries to get the peek. There are four members there at A-Long. He will convey that information, but Forrest gets a great headshot. And now the stampede can begin. They're going to push down A-Long fast. Lowell is here on short and somehow manages to kill. Find a kill with a pistol. Finds a second through the smoke as well. This is disgusting stuff. As he has got teammates now coming to support him from short. But he can just hide on Gandalf. He can just wait for this plant to go down and that's when he can make his move. His teammates will slowly be rotating to help him as well. The fake comes out from Freiburg. No movement just yet. And eventually, Lau does pop out and finds a third with his pistol as well. This is incredible stuff as Dennis comes in to sweep up the round. And despite an awkward buy, Mouse do put a 12th on the board. Great yeah. stuff from Lau though, Jackie. Yeah, Lau is so scary. He's such a like he's so crisp in terms of his aim capability. He's just damaging. It doesn't matter what you what you give him in his hands. Even with a pistol, he can land those just sick shots. As long as you can get those headshots off and actually pick off your opponents, you know, I, I have a lot of faith in Lau in those sort of scenarios. That's why I was saying this multiple lineup is kind of scary and it, you know, it just feels like it can be so much more as well. That's what, like, the fact is with that progression. Here we go. That replay of that Lau clip here as well. PT-50 just on short. Look at the range distance here as he's just able to rip his way through them very easily. Goes out for another peak, another frag. Quick headshot off on towards Freiburg. He really is just a sick gamer. He is an, an incredibly sick gamer. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. And I'm guessing possibly a tactical pause coming out of MIP just to discuss what's going wrong here. And if... If you were a, a coach of NIP, I mean, that would be a great job to have. You probably wouldn't be here if you did have that job, and it's probably not going to happen. I hate to break that to you. Uh, what would you be saying to the boys in the pyjamas to get them back into this game? Well, this is the thing, you know, it, it looked quite good, because basically all they were doing was drawing mouse sports out. They were going for these overpeaks, they were going for these overextends. They had to, you know, they were just taking fights that weren't too necessary. And Nip were being able to pick them off because of that. You know, they don't need to really throw too much into it. I think it's just more of a pause because they're that far down than to work out what's going on as well with their economy and just try and clarify things. But that slower style of CS was working. They were drawing a lot of utility out and they were drawing sort of the confidence here. Because I feel like Mouse Balls as well, they look pretty confident. So, like, all right, I can take this 1v1. They tried to face it and then got picked off by Nip. Into this as well, you can see the effects of the economy there. Two rifleless players over on Piff and Forest. But they have utility to work with, they've got those smokes, that's going to be one of the key factors as they make their way out long once again. They've proven that they can actually get out long quite effectively. These are always the rounds I find most interesting as well after the tactical pause because they've had a little bit more time to discuss what they're going to do on T side. So they've clearly come up with a strategy, this is going to be the push that we're going to go for, this is the execute. So I'd be expecting something a little bit more flashy, a little bit more well rehearsed, well oiled. As four members are just waiting around A with one lurking in B tunnels. I'm going to take one guess as to who that might be. It's not get right. So my guess is wrong. As I see him just waiting there at A long with the rest of his team is Oscar. There's a really big opportunity to get some important frags here and edge his team closer to victory. Can he see anyone over the smoke is the real question. Yes, he can. Takes out Freiburg. Looks for a second and Exist goes down as well. Is he going to go for a tag through the smoke? No, because Lowell is there to take him down instead. Pyth will follow suit. And now just Forrest, who was looking in tunnels, is left without a hope, without a dream. He's trying to tap, tap, tap away, but it's not going to work. Yeah, not too much to be done in that round. We'll get picked off once again. You can see the economy completely broken as well. This could be round number 14, snapped up for now sports. And, you know, what a way to go. I was saying, I believe somewhere in the region of a 16-11, I thought this game would be going, and... It's looking to be the case as Mouse Sports right now just tear their way through round in, round out. Ninja Pajamas, what are they actually going to bring to the table here? Will this be a mid to B play for Outlist? They don't have a smoke to go with, maybe just an aggressive B play. Nope, they're going to decide against it. Just wait around in tunnels. See if Mouse are going to overextend, but Mouse just staying put for now. And bear in mind, if NIP lose this, that'll be a sixth map they've lost on the bounce in competitive games in general. It'll be the third map they've lost in a row in an ESL Pro League. And Dennis gets the opening frag onto Forest as well to make things worth. Pyth goes down too. And just frags coming here, there and everywhere as they are going to push through middle, but they can't find anything. As Oscar is just going to tap away with his pistol. Can't finish off Get Right just yet. Tries to go for the no-scope as well as Get Right dances around double doors. Hoping for support here. Ah, oh, Mouse. It's just going to be a formality of finish this, finishing this one off. I want to ask you, Jackie. I'm going to ask you an interesting question here. Is it Pyth or Pith? I think it's Pith. As far as I remember. Because I don't really know. Someone told me it was free barge uh, recently, and uh, I'm not sure I agree with that, but I, I thought it was Pith, and then I heard you say Pyth, and it made me double guess myself. It's, yeah, it's, it's my accent, and then Ugh. I just commit to it. Accents are happened. a terrible thing, aren't they? So Sorry for being from London. It's, it yeah. ruins everything. It, it's a terrible it place. A lot. And we are up, up north. 
That's true. Here I've, in Leicester. I've come a long way. Oh, Oscar as well. Looking like he wants to go for an aggressive peek into towards tunnels. This could be quite interesting. He could pick, <laughs> pick off Piff very quickly here as he has that scope in. It's going to be tiptoeing his way through. The angle is covered, though. This is massive for both sides. This could really decide things. The angle was covered. They're both going to double peek into it. Unfortunately, he'll only get one. Oscar was able to duck under the bullets and take him out. Pick off Piff. Mm. It's hard to say quickly. Say that five times. Don't actually try it. As now exists in tunnels. Seeing if he can scout any information, he's going to be the lurker as the rest of them are going to just move towards A long once again, or perhaps they'll go for a short push instead. As he's just going to wait, see if anyone's going to push through smoke, but no one is going to be there. And he will back off soon. Just one minute left now for NIP to do something, and they need something to happen. They need it to happen quick because they are running out of time, not just in this round, but in this game in general, and that's what they needed. Freiburg gets the opening pick onto Nico. Well, actually, the second one, should I say, and they can push in now. As they do have the four-man to three-man advantage. Looks like they are going to go up short as well. They have preferred A rather than B. I wonder why that is that preference. I guess it's just a slower, more methodical one. <laughs> well, as I say that, they smoke off and it's going to be a mid to B. They're just second-guessing everyone. But he's playing close by those doors, but they will be aware of his positioning. Actually, Freiburg, as he bounds his way into the site, takes him down very quickly. Aerial combat. And it will force Lau and Oscar to most likely just go into a save into this. Lau can just sit in T-spawn, though, and try and find them as they go for this exit frags. Most likely exit in together. Shuts down Freiburg. Nice little headshot there. Very snappy stuff. Yeah, I wonder whether that... He was thinking, oh, with that frag, do I push in? But no, they don't need to panic, Mouse. They have so much rounds to work with. They have such a a big cushion. They've got room to breathe here. Let's get right, Will. Final owl, so the save won't come through. And NIP will put one back on the board and start the possible comeback. It's definitely going to be a rocky road. But if anyone can do it, I'd like to think NIP can. But I don't know if that's the NIP of old I'm thinking of, because the current NIP do not look like the NIP I'm used to seeing, to be honest. It's very difficult to watch for all NIP fans around the world. It's probably difficult to play as an NIP player, Jackie. Yeah, and it's you know it's just really coming down to just damaging play from our sports, but also they're working together quite nicely in terms of structure now. It seems like they've toned down those overextends that we're going for in a couple of the earlier rounds. So we'll still go for the double up setup here. Nico will have the other one as he goes for that aggressive push towards long. And here comes Oscar. All the confidence in the world as he just watches towards lower right now. Should be able to get a frag off on towards Piff here if he goes for the peak. The flashbang will go in. Doesn't affect him at all. There's the opener. Falls back straight away. And that's a great way to kick off the round. Just edge him closer to this victory. Now a lot to do for the four remaining NIP players. As they've always waited in this B tunnel, they hope that Mouse are going to push out, but Mouse have been reluctant to do so. The only time they did actually overextend was when they had those UMPs and they had like a reason to overextend. But I say that, now they come forward and eventually it's paid off as Exist picks up two onto Spiddy and Dennis. And they are going to be moving quickly onto this B site, hoping that no one else should be there. As usually, you will only get two holding the site, but instead they're just going to throw a few Molotovs, see if they can force the rotate, and they are going to back off. Whereas really, I would have liked that quick, aggressive push into B, to be honest. Yeah, but this is the thing, you know, we touched on that. Mouse, they throw away some of these rounds with these aggressive faces, and Dennis waddled his way in there, just gets picked off. Spitty's also going to fall asleep, but it doesn't matter when you've got to play like Oscar on your side. Has now into this round a 3k on the board, takes down Exist. He's looking dominant, also going towards Long. If he peeks here off the back of his teammate aiding him, he could be on for the ace as he goes for the wide face. He's just going to be waiting for them to peek into him. They have utility to work with, but they dry peek it, shuts him down. That's the quad kill, wants the ace, fires, can't quite connect the shot just yet. He's forced to fall back, and his teammate will boost him up on towards the bomb site. He's in that elevated angle. This is great teamwork coming out. There it is. Oscar claims the ace, and Mouse Sports take the 15th round. Absolutely disgusting stuff from Oscar. Finding himself the ace and putting Mouse up to 15 rounds. And it was just that early aggression as well to kick things off. And it was interesting. With NIP able to get these these two picks here at B, I was thinking, yes, bombard yourself onto B site. But instead, they decided to throw a Molotov, throw a smoke, expecting NIP to rotate round. But NIP didn't rotate round. They stayed put. Three of them were still on A site. They, they just sussed. NIP out completely. Yeah, straight into this round as well. Oscar gets the opening frag off on towards Forest. Now, this really could spell the worst case scenario for Ninja Pajamas. This could be curtains for them. They have to try and pick this one up to stay in the game. They need to have a flawless game from now on. Exist will lead the charge through mid. Actually gets tacked down once again by Oscar. The man of the moment just been dealing so many damaging blows to that Ninja's in Pajamas side. 
Nico with an AWP of his own as well. Seeing if anyone is going to be pushing up. But no one just yet as NIP at the moment. Really struggling to decide what they want to do. Are they going to go through middle? They are flashing and they do try it, but Exist is there to stop any sort of momentum coming from them. Freiburg thankfully responds to give them a chance in this round as he now aggressively pushes up. Short looks down to CT and does find Oscar as well. So this is still winnable, but Lau shuts him down. And now it's a 3v2. And Lau should be able to get into position to take anyone on short. And that is a flashbang player. Pith goes down. So does Get Right. Mouse take the game. And the woe continues for NIP. It looked awful yesterday, mm. let's be honest. And it's still not looking fantastic. Something is wrong with NIP at the moment. Yeah, that's very true indeed. I mean, that's the thing, you know. It was weird as well because Mouse Sports, they were going for some aggressive faces. They were going for some players that weren't overly necessary and we saw Nip being able to counter that in a few of those scenarios like exists towards upper tons when Dennis and Spitty walked in takes them out quickly you had a 2k you now on a scenario where if you want you know you're, you're back into an even playing field you can try and explode you out towards that big bomb site but they just stuck with what they knew and I don't know they they just threw away some rounds where they had a lead and it also just looked like to be honest Oscar was just playing his own style of CS. It's what Oscar does, right? He's this organic powerhouse that basically is a one-man army, a lot like now on Nico, but he roams. He's one of these Orpers that will, you know, distribute himself, sprinkle his way across the map, and just leave a rain of destruction behind, and that's all he did. He was dismantling Ninja Pajamas early on their T side, round in, round out. And this was the thing, last time these guys did face up, these two teams, I mean, Oscar wasn't there. It was Chris J instead, and now with the introduction of him, they look like a powerhouse to be honest I think they really could be like contenders for winning this whole pro league that they, they took down Astralis yesterday as well in a map and that's no easy feat I mean Astralis just won the last major so amazing stuff coming out of mouse there is still questions to be asked about NIP they did really struggle and perhaps they'll come back into their element on train but judging on what happened yesterday on train I, I really worry for NIP here they could be looking at a, a zero to four deficit after the opening week of Pro League which is a worrying thing and what do you think has got to change if they are going to move on to train here and, and take anything away against Mouse? I don't know. It's looking scary because this is the thing going into train as well. A, a map where they should perform better on. A map, you know, that they used to be very dominant on. In the past, they have been able to, to overpower Mouse Sports, obviously, with that altered lineup. And the thing is, going into it like this, if they're playing like they're playing right now, they might just get obliterated as Oscar was performing tremendously well with the AWP and Train complements that style of play as well in some of those scenarios, especially on that CT side. He can shut down a lot of pushes single-handedly and we know just in terms of the fragging capability they have in Lau and Nico, easy sight holds will be coming out for them, especially towards that B-bomb site. It's so simple to ward off those pushes if you're getting those first two frags. Essentially, all your job is to delay. You know, you need to try and get those initial two frags, buy your teammates enough time to rotate over and I feel pretty confident that, you know, the majority of the players in that team can do so. Spitty was also performing a whole lot better than I expected to in that. You know, had a few key rounds, a couple of nice clutch moments, seemed to be doing a lot better. Dennis as well was providing his role a little bit better. Seemed like, you know, everything was kind of a bit more working. The cogs were in order and the machine was turning quite nicely, whereas Ninja in Pajamas just need an oil change. They look extremely lackluster. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it, they look like they're out of ideas as well. On their T side, they, they just don't really know where they want to go. They didn't have any crazy executes, they didn't have any yesterday, they struggled on Dust 2 as well. Is it just a case of the teams they are playing are just more well rehearsed, they're better practiced at the moment, and, and they're in better spirits? Is that why NIP are losing so badly right now? See, the thing is, this is what I don't understand as well, is Ninja Gym Pajamas should have a very vast playbook. It should have a lot of depth to it, right? You've got Fret behind them, you know, working his way through in terms of the coaching role. They have a lot of experience there, and it just seems like there's nothing. They're coming into it, they'll try one thing, as soon as that buckles, they don't adapt. There's no organic style of CS, they're not bending at all, they are just instantly snapping and giving up. Well, it is going to be another loss. For NIP, they are struggling very much so, so they won't be able to put any points on the league table just yet, but they will have another chance, and it is going to be on train. So we'll be back soon with NIP against Mouse on train.